Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And this video is about failed back surgery syndrome. One of my interests as a uh, spinal neurosurgeon is revision spinal surgery. So a lot of patients that come and see me have been online and often ask me about um, failed back surgery syndrome. So it actually encompasses quite a broad spectrum of problems and doesn't have a clearly defined disease process. But the um, International Association for the Study of Pain have defined it, have given a definition as uh, lower lumbar back pain um, that has began after surgery or was pre-existent and then made worse by surgery and is in the same location as where the surgery was carried out. So it could be a new pain after spine surgery, or it could be pain made worse by spine surgery. One of the reasons it has its own classification, why it's actually given a title, is, well, if we look at the statistics from uh, this study here in the Journal of Pain Research, um, if we look at the, in the United States, between 1998 and 2008, there's been a 170% increase in the number of spinal fusion operations um, in that period. So the amount of spinal surgery that's gone on, not just in America, but also worldwide, has gone up massively uh, during that time frame. We discussed this issue in a bit more detail in previous videos, why surgery for back pain doesn't work, and also spinal fusion, when it works and when it doesn't. But ultimately, there was a period of time quite a few years ago where dark discs or abnormalities in the discs of the spine um, were seen by a surgeon on the scan in a patient who had back pain and the wrong assumption was made that that must be the cause of the back pain. They underwent fusion, pain didn't get better and sometimes got worse because of complications for the surgery. So let's break down the predisposing factors. Well, they've been broadly categorized into preoperative factors. So things that think factors the patient has before the surgery, intraoperative factors, so the actual operation itself, and then postoperative factors, so complications that can occur thereafter. So by far the commonest category is probably the preoperative factors. So um, there are psychological factors, um, social factors, and then there's physiological or other health factors that come into play. So anxiety and depression pre-existing um, statistically do make it more likely and I've discussed this in my interview with uh, Peter O'Sullivan and his work on cognitive functional therapy. Whilst you may have a physiological cause of pain, we know we know for a fact that such psychological factors, emotions, stress and anxiety are very, very potent amplifiers of pain. So these are pre-existing factors that put you at risk of making your back pain worse with surgery. So the more physiological factors are things like smoking and obesity. So being overweight, unfortunately, or quite overweight and smoking um, do impair wound healing. Um, if you've undergone a fusion operation, the more weight you have on the construct and around the construct make it more likely to fail. And the impedance of wound healing as well, also uh, from smoking, um, will reduce the chance of a successful fusion. The presence of stenosis, so narrowing of the spinal canal where all the nerves run through, or a disc herniation makes um, failed back surgery syndrome uh, more likely. And that's actually because slip discs or herniated discs themselves aren't, uh, aren't really solely the cause of back pain. So fusing someone purely because they've got a dark disc is very unlikely to alleviate their back pain um, unless there are exceptional circumstances, which I've discussed in um, other videos. And likewise, stenosis, the narrowing of the spine and compression of nerves within the spinal canal, the, the surgery for that is predominantly to treat leg symptoms rather than back pain itself. Previous surgery to the spine, or multiple operations, also make further surgery to treat back pain alone more likely to fail, um, or even the uh, development of new back pain that gets worse. And in terms of social preoperative factors, what's statistically been shown is litigation. So claims, workers' compensation, processes like that going on in the background uh, are more, make you more likely to develop this failed back surgery syndrome. So now let's talk about intraoperative factors, i.e. the surgery itself. Um, common causes are the wrong choice of operation. So for example, you've had an MRI scan, you've got chronic back pain, you've had an MRI scan, 
it shown two or three dark discs in your spine, which is a very common finding in patients who do not have back pain. And the surgeon has picked one of those levels to fuse and things haven't changed. So the wrong level, either the wrong level or not enough levels has been done or none of those levels were actually the cause of your pain. So literally the wrong choice of operation or when surgery itself was just not indicated. Therefore, it's very important that you're investigated thoroughly, uh, and that's predominantly from the clinical history, um, the examination findings, and partly, partly the MRI scan and how well that correlates. Some extra tests I do, which I've discussed in the spinal fusion video, is a CT SPECT or a SPECT CT, which can show findings on, a, on, a, on the CT SPECT which match specific findings on the MRI scan. If the two match, we can quite often say with confidence that, that that level, that segment is the pain generator. I often do injections of that area just as a test to see if, if the theory stands, if there's a transient improvement of your pain. Um, so it's really important you're thoroughly investigated to be absolutely sure that the level the surgeon is operated on is indeed the cause of your pain. And then finally, in terms of intraoperative complications, it's just poor surgical technique. So poor positioning of the cage um, or instrumentation, um, and then therefore it doesn't fuse properly and that can cause chronic problems thereafter. Then the final uh, category are post-operative factors. So these are usually delayed complications after surgery, such as an infection um, in the region, uh, delayed bleeding, which is usually 24, 48, 72 hours later, that can cause compression of the nerves that may need further surgery, or instability of the spine if you've poorly placed the instrumentation the surgeon has or if too much bone or too much of the joint is disrupted and you get secondary instability. Um, these are sort of delayed complications that lead to fa failed back surgery syndrome and chronic pain. So how do we manage this? Well the good news is it's not all doom and gloom. Um, it isn't easy to manage. It does require what we call a multidisciplinary approach, which is the whole basis of the spine MDT. MDT stands for multidisciplinary team. Um, so it does involve um, the presence of a surgeon, a pain specialist, and perhaps physiotherapist to sit down, get their heads together, have a look at your scans and go through your history thoroughly and try and identify which of the factors I've just discussed are the cause of the cause of this and between those three or more disciplines we can work out how it can be treated we know statistically that the majority of such cases are managed uh, non-operatively provided there isn't an obvious complication that you can reverse with the surgery such as a badly positioned um, screw or a fractured screw or for example a, a cage the little breeze block between the discs that uh, between the, the vertebral bodies that we put in for a fusion to happen if that's not migrated there are the various factors where surgery might be the answer to correct a very obvious problem most of the time it's a case of getting the medications up to scratch with a combination of physiotherapy um, and our pain specialists can apply with medications we can do treatments with targeting very specific points in the spine with injections that give you a little bit of a window of being pain free and that's when the physiotherapy is used at its maximum so that you can tolerate that kind of work um, under that pain control and there are slightly more invasive treatments that as pain specialists use called radiofrequency ablation where instead of an injection into the spine a needle is passed to a very specific target but then using a special type of current, you burn the nerve endings in that area so that you de desensitize it. And then hopefully with building the muscles that surround the spine with physiotherapy, things should improve in the long term. So what is vital is an overall team effort with one person taking responsibility to oversee the care that all the other specialists are providing. And that's the fundamental basis of um, the spine MDT. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps people suffering with uh, back pain and spine disease find useful information that I try and post on a weekly basis. For more information, please visit us at spinemdt.com. Uh, contact us. We'll be very happy to help you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.